while she's... Oh, do you want to come up for a sec and just share about your meeting this afternoon after church? I know. Yes, yeah, so we have a kids' church meeting just up in the building, just after church. It won't take too long. Um, again, so if you're part of kids' church, um, if you can make your way up there. If you can't make it today, um, just see me briefly and I'll just give you something just to um, look at. But again, uh, if you're interested, you guys are more than welcome to come up. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Liz. <laughs> All right, without further ado, Pastor Mark, would you like to come and share the word? We're so excited. We have expectancy. Yes. Thank you. How's everyone going today? <laughs> Kerry's already said you look amazing. Take the person beside you and say you look incredible. <laughs> Wonderful. Make sure you tell them like you mean it. <laughs> ah. Hallelujah. Just before I begin to start, what a great, who loves this weather? Anybody? I heard someone say no, no, and someone's doing the thumbs down. I'm just going, I rebuke that in Jesus' name. <laughs> you have to bear with me because now I've got the microphone. Because I tell you what, we love the rain, don't we? Someone said to me, it's just a normal wet season in downtown Bow Desert. <laughs> what do you mean? It's normal. It's like this is how it used to be many, many years ago. It was a good solid wet. Hallelujah. And uh, I just think that we've had enough dry time. Who thinks rain's good? You know, the rain of God's Spirit is being poured out also upon your life. Hallelujah. Who's ever had some dry time spiritually? Anybody? Who knows that wet time spiritually is better than a dry time spiritually? Hallelujah. So we thank God for the rain today. And uh, I just think it's absolutely beautiful. It does cause a little bit of mowing to do. And um, I know some of you fellows are going, oh, man, I'm sick of mowing. Just enjoy the mowing. Tell a person beside you, enjoy the mowing. Get a horse, get a sheep. I know there's always conflict when we talk about the weather. But we prayed for this rain in, didn't we? We prayed off. We prayed off, what was it called? La Nina, El Nino, which whatever that rubbish is. And we just said, God's going to bring the rain. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, before we get to the Word this morning, it's already come up in a number of conversations already, and I suppose it's overflowing from last week already, as we began to speak about hope. Hope. And the word hope means expectancy. It's come up in conversation already this morning, expectancy. We're expecting. What are you expecting God to do? Amen. And before before I bring the Word and start this again today, part two, of hope, your expectancy. I'm going to ask Janet to come and just take one minute, two minutes and bring a testimony. I got word from the front row. Hallelujah. G'day church. Um, This week, on Tuesday, I took a, I had an allergic reaction. I ended up in hospital and was taken straight into the resuscitation bay. Tracy was with me. And um, they gave me medication. I was doing okay. I thought, Jesus, thank you. And then suddenly I felt my heart. I said, I said, something's wrong. My heart, something's wrong. My blood pressure was 50 on 25. My heart rate was nearly 20, just over 20. Tracy was praying and I felt like, Lord, how much more? I have hit a wall I've hit a wall, Lord, but he's the God of breakthroughs. Walls are nothing for him, nothing for him. He will come through. And he, when I felt like I could, I, if you want to give up, he won't give up on you. 
He will never let go, never. Within half an hour, I was sitting up talking. I, I had to be tilted upside down because my blood pressure was so low. And as an intensive care nurse, I know I should have been in intensive care for at least a week on adrenaline, on everything. But within half an hour, the ICU team had come around and they were watching me thinking I should go to intensive care. But no, walls are nothing. I'd hit a wall, but that's nothing for God. Our God is a God of breakthrough. Glory to God. She looks pretty alive today after having a week like that. Hey, isn't God good, eh? And that's the message coming forth. It's God is good, He's great, He's marvellous. And I know sometimes we can get bogged down in your own circumstances and wonder where is God. But it takes about a moment to recount the testimonies and rethink what God has done in your life. Amen. And you go, oh, no, He's real. I remember. Someone say, I remember today. It's good to remember what the Lord has done, eh? And you know, today as we start this message today, I really didn't get finished. I told Pastor Errol I had a number of points and he was amazed and he saw me writing again this morning. He said, you better stop writing. That'll do. Otherwise, you won't get to it today. But I want to just, and, that, and we say that just to be light of what God's doing, I mean, because He just keeps expanding and expanding the thoughts in our hearts. and It's just overflow. Someone say it's overflow. And that's what God wants from your life, an overflow of His wonderful, wonderful grace. Amen. And you know, a number of years ago, unlike the world kind of hope, who's ever thought, heard people say, well, I hope for this and I'm hoping for that. And it's like, it's just like, well, we'll wait and see what happens. Who knows? But can I encourage you, as I did last week to start that, let's shift our understanding of what hope really means. The God biblical kind of hope is a strong and a confident expectation of a good and positive outcome of what God is going to do. Amen. And Pastor Grace and I learned this many years ago, and we, we recount our stories. You have your stories today. We've heard three testimonies this morning of the goodness of God, how God turns up. But um, we've lived through many droughts, and you can see why I always take about, talk about the rain. And, and while later I'm here, you have to bear with me celebrating the rain. Because I tell you what, we've worked our way through and seen God turn up when it looked impossible. When it seems like the weather forecasts and everything is against you. And you know what? When you depend on the weather or the rain for your livelihood because it affects what you do, it's everything to you. And you know what? It's like this. And so you hear people say, I hope it's going to rain. You know, we used to look at other, other farmers and they'd go, it's never going to rain. You'd hear that conversation, wouldn't you? And you go, I'm not talking to you anymore. I'm walking away. And you hear someone say, well, it'll rain when it rains. And I'm going to get to these points in a moment today. These are comments. This is the world's kind of hope. Last week I said, Hebrews 11 once says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not yet seen. Amen. So you must have hope. See, I believe many believers don't even get to faith I know you have faith, but if it's not based on a hope today, it's like you haven't even reached hope, let alone get to the faith realm. You know what I'm saying today? Because hope is such a positive expectation of a good outcome, that God would come true to His Word. And Grace and I found many scriptures over here. So I'm just going to share this testimony. We would see a drought start out there. It would get drier and drier and drier. It would go months and months and months without a drink. Water dams, water holes would get lower and lower. The feed would become dust bowl. And you'd be going, there's not a cloud in the sky. You'd say, we believe God's going to rain. We believe God's going to rain. We were holding on to a promise of God's Word while all else looks like it was going to fail. Listen, my, it was go bust, go broke, walk away or believe God. And I want to encourage some of you for emotional things, relational things. Um financial, resourceful needs that you may have. Some point you've got to grab a hold of the promise of God for your life and let hope rise on the inside of you so that there's something to attach your faith to. Because if it's not anchored, like last week, anchored, anchored in the Word, we'll go to that verse in a moment, it produces a drifting. 
And Pastor Grace and I, we would get pages of Scripture and print it, print it on an A4 page. This is my testimony. I would encourage somebody else will find a truth that you need for your breakthrough, which Janet talked about there, and say, I'm going to apply and release faith through the hope I have in the promise of God for my life, and God's going to turn up and come through. Amen. I'm teaching you this year at the start of the year, we're going to have breakthrough. We're going to live in breakthrough. Oftentimes it's just a release of your mouth and praise as we encouraged you this morning, which brings God into the equation and separates your soul from what's really happening around about you. Yes, we have a soul to relate to each other on, but that's not the leader of my life. The Spirit and God's Word will lead my life. Hallelujah. Because it's based on hope today. A confident positive expectation of a good outcome. Hallelujah. So Pastor Grace and I, we'd, we'd have our four pages of the Word for breakfast in the morning. We'd read it out together and speak those things over. You see, sometimes you may get just desperate enough, and I say that in a good sense, it's not that you but that you'll take, say, what's God speak about my situation and begin to proclaim it over my life on a daily, regular basis, not because someone told me to, but we had to produce hope in our lives, that something that our faith could attach to, to see the hand of God turn up. And today we, we're here to testify that it did rain and God opened the floodgates of blessing, amen. And commodity prices did turn around and come good because God said He will bless His children, amen. Sometimes it needs much patience and we know that faith is undergirded by patience, amen. But hope is a foundation we must never hold on, never lose hold of. I just want to encourage that. We have our testimony. Many of you have your own testimony. But if you're looking for the breakthrough to have a testimony, these are some of the clues you can use to build your life and see God turn up in a positive way. And the Bible's full of verses and stories about people who did that. Amen. It says here, and I explained last week, the word, the word hope is simply the word great expectation. And it comes from the Greek to do that, amen. But in 1 Peter, a couple of verses to get started with 1 Peter 1 verse 3. This says this from the TPT. It says, Celebrate with praise the God of our Father and Lord Jesus Christ. Kerry encouraged us this morning, so did Matty. Matty, to do that, celebrate with praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has shown His extravagant mercy. Someone say it's extravagant mercy. It reads on here, For His fountain of mercy has given us new life. Hallelujah. We are reborn to experience a living, energetic hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Someone say, I've got energetic hope. Last week we had abounding hope, remember? Who remembers that word? Someone say, I've got energetic hope today. I'm hoping this week if I see you downtown around the, around the corner or somewhere that you're not looking like this. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I go, hello! And you go, oh! <laughs> Where did that energetic hope go to? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Whoever gets to being like that at times? Is it just me? Who's ever been caught like that? Someone say energetic hope. I'm just reading the Bible this morning. Who knows? It's just wonderful. Energetic hope. Amen. It's like energizing bunny hope on the inside. It just causes you want to bounce and run a bit. Amen. Someone say it again. I have energetic hope. Hallelujah. Didn't think the Bible was so positive, did you? Oh, Pastor Mark, I just want to have an off week. Now, I know you don't say that, but who's ever thought that? Huh? Can everybody just leave me alone because I want to have an off week this week? Who's going to have an energetic hope week? Hopeful week. And you know the reason why it says here? Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Hallelujah. Maddie said today it was about the resurrection. Hallelujah. 
Come on, something comes alive on the inside and hope is produced. Hallelujah. How often have you gone from Sunday to Sunday morning and all of a sudden there's a revelation bomb that goes off and you realise that you haven't had any hope-filled encounters from last Sunday to the next Sunday? (laughs) He just, sorry, Brian just said what you were thinking. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but now listen, truly, who's ever experienced that where you've actually found yourself moving along? With, and you know, by, by Thursday, things are going pretty much to the, you know where? <laughs> I won't say it. But it's because there hasn't been a hope-filled, energizing expectation flood your life with the truth of God's Word that's picked your soul up and flipped your week around. I mean, you can, you can get, and I'm just here to challenge that this, this week or even this year, that we have a year filled of energetic hope. Amen. Because Christ was resurrected from the dead. Amen. And it said before that His fountain of mercy has given us new life. Someone shout, I've got new life. If you're here this morning and you've never received the new life that Christ offers, you can receive it today because it's available, amen, for all those who believe in their heart and speak with their mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord. The Bible says you shall be saved. Someone say, I've got a hope today. Hallelujah. There's another verse in Romans chapter 5, five verse 5. And you know what? I, I read down, I thought, you know what? I can't start at verse 5. I've got to start at Romans 5, verse 1. It says this here in the TPT. It says, our, fa- our faith in Jesus transfers God's righteousness to us and He now declares us flawless in His eyes. Woo! That'll make someone dance, stand in the chair and go praise the Lord before they go home today. Hallelujah. And it reads on, it says, This means we can now enjoy true and lasting peace with God all because of what our Lord Jesus, the Anointed One, has done for us. Someone say He has done it. Hallelujah. Verse 2 says, Our faith guarantees us permanent access into this marvellous kindness that has given us a perfect relationship with God. What an incredible joy bursts forth within us as we keep on celebrating our hope of experiencing God's glory. Hallelujah. Someone say, I've got hope today of experiencing God's glory. Come on, these verses nullify religious jargon that people get involved in and the, and the lies of the enemy to bring you down and cause you to have an offer. These verses right here will energize you, amen, because it speaks about the resurrection that's come to live on the inside of you. Woo, hallelujah. I preach myself happy, Pastor Errol. Verse 3 says, but that's not all. Someone say, but that's not all. Even in times of trouble, we have joyful confidence. Oh, take the person beside you and say, even in troubled times. You see, listen to me this morning. As pastor of this church, we cannot ignore and nor do we downplay or push to a side that there are troubled times. Even though we're such an upbeat church, we acknowledge that people do have troubled times. Amen. We're just like we're not burying our heads and saying everything's good because everything's not always good. Hallelujah. But it says here, but that's all. Even in times of trouble, we have a joyful confidence, knowing that our pressures will develop in us patient, a patient endurance. Verse four, and a patient endurance will refine our character. And proven character leads us back to where? Hope. Woo! Someone say, I've got hope today. See, it's like a, it's like a perpetual wheel. Say, so when trouble arises, we take God's truth and it brings us round through patience. Amen. And waiting upon God brings us back to a position of hope again because hope's going to come through every time as we wait upon the living God. Hallelujah. And verse 5 is where I wanted to come to this morning. I couldn't read one without... So read 5 without 1 to 5. It says this in verse 5. It leads us back to hope, verse 4, at verse 5. And this hope is not a disappointing fantasy. Hmm. Because we know 
we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Ghost who lives on the inside of us. Yeah, you see the position of hope comes from the positioning or the power of the Holy Spirit that lives on the inside of you. This is not being asked for just from your own self or you're mustering up yourself enough internal fortitude to say, mm, I'm going to win, mm, I'm going to win. It's about resting in God and saying, no, I'm dependent upon this internal strength of the living God that's coming inside me, the power of the Holy Spirit. I read this one again. And this hope is not a disappointing fantasy because we can now experience the endless love of God cascading into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who lives in us. Romans 12, 12. Let's look at that one this morning from the TPT. It says, let this hope burst forth within you. Someone saying, let hope burst forth. Romans 12, verse 12. Let this hope burst forth. What are we talking about? Let this expectation burst forth within you, releasing sometimes joy. No, Pastor Mark, you don't understand. Life has to happen, eh? You ever heard those people? The realists. Come on now, be real. You can't have joy all the time. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? Who's, who finds those people as you do life? The realist. Come on, just be real now. You can't have joy all the time. Did I just read that there? I, I, I want to encourage you this morning. We've got to be encouraged ourselves. It says there, where are we? Romans 12, 12. Let this hope burst forth within you, releasing a continual joy. Don't give up in a time of trouble, but commune with God at all times. Hallelujah. Woo! Someone say, let, let expectation burst forth within you, releasing a continual joy. Hallelujah. I had the privilege of being here this week through the morning prayers. And on a couple of occasions, it's, never, it's always more than one, I'm confronted with some people that are very, very happy at 6 a.m. in the morning. Who knows that it's sometimes hard to deal with these sort of people. You know what I'm saying? You've arrived from your state of sleepiness and you find looking for your first cup of tea or coffee and they're way past that because they've just got epivescence joy that it seemed like it was there yesterday and here it is at 6 a.m. It's there again this morning. It's like a continual bubbling that comes up and you arrive and everyone's just looking going, what's so funny? <laughs> I've encountered that even this past week. There's a precious, beautiful souls in our church that you arrive at 6 a.m. at the morning meeting with God, prayer meeting, and they've got joy happening. Hallelujah. Yeah, yeah. You know why? They've attached their life to the expectation through the hope of God's Word and it's producing a continual joy in their life. They're not waiting for circumstances or the sleepy dust to become clear in their eyes. They've decided that joy is their persona and it's their life mission to live that way by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And I'm guaranteeing if you could question those precious ones, that every circumstance of their life is not altogether well. All things aren't right and equal, but they've decided this epiphenesis of this joy is going to bubble up from out within them. They are releasing continual joy because expectation is bursting forth in their life to the glory of God. Remember, well, Pastor Mark, I can't do that. Listen, I say to you, everybody can experience this because it's Christ in you, the resurrected one that produces this in your life. Amen. The, the, the key is to become aware of Him. I come to the prayer meeting this morning at minutes past eight o'clock and the joy was there as well. Part of the conservative part of Pastor Mark says, now listen, folks. <laughs> uh -huh. 
can we just curb this joy for a little bit? We've got some people coming this morning that have got some really big issues happening and they don't need you to be laughing because they might say, well, what are you laughing at? It's not funny. But you know what? Joy is the serious business of heaven. And it releases the power of God to go to work. And that verse I just read, Romans 12, 12, says it's produced from expectation. It's produced from the hope of God within you. Wow, isn't this cool? Who thought that joy is a, is a byproduct of hope? Expectation. Produces joy. Hallelujah. So if you see someone's a bit down, try to say, how's your hope going? How's hope going? How's expectation going for you today? Because that'll need a bit of a boost up on the inside of you. I'm not being mean. I'm just saying these are keys for you to live in victory. And it's victory not based upon circumstances. It wasn't based for Grace and I upon whether it had rained or not. We chose, amen, by the power of the Holy Ghost to get our four pages of notes out and we began to read it. And by the end of it, we'd say, whoa, let's go and get the day done, amen. Whoa, let's go and do it. Nothing had changed in the natural, but in our hearts, something shifted, amen. That's why. Let's quickly go to Hebrews chapter 6. We looked at this verse last week. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 18 to 20. Maybe 17. I'm going to read from the TPT. Hebrews 6, 17. In the, so in the same way, God wanted to end all doubt and confirm it even more forcefully to those who would inherit His promises. Do I have any promise inheritors here today his purpose was unchangeable so God added his vow to the promise hallelujah so it is impossible for God to lie for we know that his promises or his promise and his vow will never change and now we have run into his heart Kerry talked about the heart of God this morning. And now we've run into His heart to hide ourselves in His faithfulness. Hallelujah. Someone say He's faithful this morning. And it says here, This is where we find His strength and comfort. For He, God, Christ, empowers us to seize what has already been established ahead of time on an unshakable hope. Hallelujah. Someone say, I have unshakable hope. It reads on here, now we have this certain hope. It's like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls to God Himself. Hallelujah. And our anchor of hope is fastened to the mercy seat in the heavenly realm beyond the sacred threshold. I realize from this verse, and you can read it in many versions, okay, to get the broader message of it. You know what? Something happens when you take hope and hope. Take expectation and realize it's attached to the things of God. It's not just working in this realm, but it's got a beeline. It's got an, got an attachment to the throne of God. Amen. Where that locks you in. You know what? I praise God today for these truths because I know so many of us at times, we can have struggle in our lives and sometimes it needs somebody to, to tap lovingly on your shoulder and say, hey, 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 where's your hope today? Where's your hope today? Because when your soul is running away with you, right, doing Mickey flips somewhere else. <laughs> thank you. But you, you know what I'm saying? It's like your soul is leading your life, taking you where you never thought you'd ever want to go. But it's like you've got to have this hope, this expectancy is like an anchor It says, for your soul. Otherwise, the soul runs away. And next thing, you're seeing things, you're thinking things, you're believing things, you're perceiving things that aren't real. To be real. And there's nothing there, just a mirage. But your soul's gone there because you didn't allow the hope, the expectation to be anchored to the promise, which caused a connection to the heavenly railway men and locked it in by the power of God. And then your soul become established on the truth of who God says you are. Hallelujah. We can relate. Pastor Mark's been there. Where it's running off. That's why sometimes you get to Thursday or Friday, you go, oh my gosh, what promise 
have I taken for today and this week and said, that's mine, that's working in my life. I make myself aware of that and hold on to it today in Jesus' name. Huh? The world, with every form of technology, every form of communication available, yet we have the sickest of people in their soul, but they have the availability of everything they could ever want at their fingertips. But that's not the answer. The answer is hope in Jesus Christ and the power of the resurrection living on the inside of a person which will take their soul from being anxious and running away and perceiving and seeing things that aren't happening, destroying you. I you say, no, I'm going to anchor myself here. I don't know how many, you know what, if Pastor Mark is honest with you, every week I've got to rein myself in and get a hold of the truth of God's Word. Say, no, we're locking on here today. <laughs> Pastor Grace and I have spent nights together sleeping on our boat. You've got no idea the creepy feeling it is You've lobbed the anchor out and you do a few checks, you know, before you bunker down for a snooze. But sometimes it's hard to go to sleep because you think, is that thing holding? And you pop up from under the, beyond the gunnels, thank you. And you look for the landmark of which you tied off on, you go, what? Where is it? <laughs> oh, we, and you've gone like this and you go, whoo, we're not where we thought. You know, and some have actually pulled anchor up, mowed it up further and gone again to get another grip. Hello. Sometimes you've got to pull up and get another grip of the hope that is set before you on the inside. Ah, Come on, someone, get this. someone will get this today, man. You can't run it life on your soul. And even some well-believing, beautiful friends or Christian people want to keep you in the soul realm. But I'm saying today, we are, are going to be a people of the spirit realm. Hallelujah. And it doesn't always agree with the soul or the natural realm. You know what, Pastor Grace and I, we've, we thought we got locked down and we've gone to sleep and you wake up. And look over the gunnel. Oh, again, for the second time. And you know what? The tide's changed. And you've gone, whee! And now you're around this way. And you hop up and look at it and you're going, there's nothing there. Did you hear, are you getting this this morning? Come on, you've swung around and what you thought you were looking at is just completely vanished. Well, I didn't drift, we've just turned around. It's totally, you know, but when you're, you can say, oh, look at this side and there's the marker. It's very scary. Listen, so's life. So is life at times. That's why I'm laboring this today because we will become fearful, scared, emotionally, just like a, a vegetable. It doesn't make sense either. It's just, you know, like just a total basket case. Can you say that? At Harvest Point Church on a Sunday morning. Why? Because things aren't the way they are or when you left it that way. But when you know you've got the anchor as hope set in the promise of God, amen, you will not slip. And you can be that things come and want to toss you around and blow you around a bit and the tide comes and it changes and winds come and storms come, but you're locking in, amen, because it's locked in on the promise of God. We have a confident expectation today that what God said, it will come to pass in Jesus' name. I hope you get that today. 
It's beautiful, amen? Someone say, I have a certain hope. It's like a strong, unbreakable anchor holding our souls to God Himself. Our anchor of hope is a fastening to the mercy seat in the heavenly realm beyond the sacred threshold. Hallelujah. We lay hold of it today. You know, I just want to quickly give you four kinds of expectations this morning. I better get to it. I won't get to it. Someone say number one. Number one. But let me, as we read that, let me read this verse. I just found another, found another verse here. Hmm. Colossians 1, 27. Phil, I love this one. Christ in you, the hope of glory. Christ in you, the expectation of His glory. Amen. It reads like this, 27 to 29 in the TPT. Living within you is the Christ who floods you with the expectation of glory. This mystery of Christ embedded within us becomes a heavenly treasure test of hope filled with riches of glory for His people. Hallelujah. And God wants everyone to know it. Christ is our message. Hallelujah. We preach to awaken hearts and bring every person into the full understanding of the truth. It has become my inspiration and passion in ministry, Paul speaking, to labour with a tireless intensity with His power flowing through me to present every believer the revelation of being His perfect one in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Woo! Paul said he laboured tirelessly for this reason, amen, that he, that he would see everyone that they would see themselves perfect in Jesus Christ through the knowledge of God. But today, I want to just show you expectations. You know what? There's four types of expectations. Number one is negative. Negative expectations. Really what that is, a negative expectation is fear-based. And you know what? When you have a fear-based expectation, in actual fact, you attract what you fear. What you are fearing ends up coming along and turning up. We're starting at the bottom. We're going to get to the good stuff at the end. Number one is a negative expectation. Who knows that bad experiences cause a negative expectation? And the enemy plays on a negative or a bad experience to keep farming or producing negative expectation life if you don't base it back on the truth of God's Word, of who God says you are. You can, you can, a bad experience can give you a negative expectation. It has the power to produce what you are expecting. Ever heard those words? People say, see, I told you so. Who's heard that one before? Well, I'm not believing for anything good because I've had so many bad experiences. And then you go, see, I told you so. It's a negative expectation built on a negative hope. It's not the God kind of hope. Someone say negative hope. Boo. Yeah, yeah. And you know what happens? Once you lock on to negative expectations, you keep attracting the negative. Because that's what you're believing for. That's what you're thinking about. That's what you're speaking about. Well, this person left me, rejected me, so will the next person. And so you can build this concept of what you, you're not actually wanting that, but because of the negative expectation, that keeps building and the perpetual motion keeps happening because that's what you'll keep continually falling back on. Someone will say no to negative expectation. I heard this story, and Pastor Wendy's probably heard it before too, but I heard this bloke one time, and... Uh, some of the, who's ever played on a, a prank on someone getting married? You naughty people. <laughs> Who knows that's a cruel thing to do? But you know what? This bloke one day, maybe he wasn't getting married, but they, he was sleeping. And so someone got some smelly cheese and just put it on his lip and his moustache, just rubbed a bit in there. And you know, this bloke woke up from sleep and, oh man, oh man, stinks in here. <laughs> Woo! Smells bad. So it was a prank, right? So he hops outside and says, where's that, where's that sting coming from? Pokes his head at the door. Oh, it stinks out here too. Oh, 
bad smelling cheese. Anyway, he said, well, hops in his motor car to go somewhere for where he's got to go to. Oh, it smells in the car too. Oh. Eventually he said, when it goes down, the whole world stinks. <laughs> it's right here. Under his nose. It was the outlook or the stink or the expectation he was taking with him everywhere we go. Someone say no to negative expectation. No. Someone say no. Okay, we'll move quickly. Number two. Hmm. You know what number two can be? Neutral expectation. You'll find somebody who says, well, I'm not going to be negative, but I'm not going to be positive either. I'm going to be on the fence. Someone say neutral expectation. It's not negative, nor is it positive. It's like, well, whatever happens, happens. Whatever turns up, turns up. It's like, I'm just glad that I'm breathing and that I'm here. and It'll be whatever it'll be. Who knows that's neutral expectation. You know what? And Pastor Grace and I, those that know often the Western grazing fraternity, they have become neutral with expectation. And it's kind of because of the world system, okay? It's like, well, I don't want to believe for the bad, but I can never expect the good either. So we sit in the middle because we don't want to get our hopes up and be disappointed. This is neutral expectation, which will rob and destroy the plan of God for your life. It's not negative, but it's not positive. It's like I can't believe for anything. You just got to take what it comes and see what happens. Someone say no to neutral expectation. Some people live their lives. They don't want to be let down by somebody else. They don't want to be let down by, if I believe in that, that doesn't happen, I'll be let down or I'll be disappointed. You know what you're going to decide today? I'm not going to be negative. I'm not going to live in neutral expectation. Number three, number three, no, it doesn't get much better yet. Number three can be misguided expectation. Mm, someone say misguided. You know what happens? You set expectations on the wrong thing. Hmm. Who remembers Naaman? In, uh, was it Second Kings? I wrote the, wrote the text down here. 2 Kings 5. You know what? He was leprous. He'd heard about the prophet who was healing people. He thought, well, so the young servant said, we'll get Naaman down to, the, down to the prophet and get a miracle for him. Who knows you can have misguided expectation. Remember, Naaman's a captain of a king's army. He's a, someone of importance. He's the, he's the man. He said, I'm somebody. He said, if I go down there, he'll come out and wave his hand at me and boom, this thing will all clear. Well, Naaman goes down to the prophet's house and the prophet sends out the messenger. He says, hey, go and tell that captain, that mighty man, that the, the, the commander of the king's army, hey, captain, go wash in the Jordan, the muddy Jordan, and dip seven times. And Naaman's like, oh, doesn't he know who I am? Doesn't he know who he's talking to? I thought, misguided, I thought he would come out and wave his hand and bow and honour me and respect me and give me the front seat and promote me and take good care of me. He sends somebody to tell me a message, go wash in the muddy Jordan. Misguided expectation because you put the, put the expectation on the wrong thing. For some people, we put it in another person. 
If only this person will do it, they'll make a way for me. They'll make it happen. It's misguided expectation. You know what, Naaman, the little girl said, Naaman, you'll die with this illness. Because she said, if the man of God said to do something hard and difficult, you would probably do it. It was really simple. Just go down to the Jordan and dip seven times. <sighs> okay. You know what Naaman's problem was? Pride. Misguided expectation produces pride because we think it should be a certain way. It should come through a certain person. I should get certain recognition. Why wasn't I invited to the event? Why wasn't I told about that? Why wasn't I told that I could come? Why aren't I given the front seat? Or, you know, I'm just making stories up now. It's about whatever you feel is your problem. Why wasn't I given a chance? Why didn't they invite me to do that? That's what Naaman said. <laughs> you know, God resists proud. And I thought about this, I thought, man, it's bad enough when the devil's against let alone, let alone having God resist you. Think about it. Naaman had to humble himself. And he had to go down to the Jordan River. And the little girl said, go on, in you get. One, two, three Duncans, four dips. Oh, that'll do. Nothing's changed. The man of God said seven times. Do you know what? If God says to you to go dip seven times, don't stop at three or four. <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know what that refers to in your life, but listen, it's like that thing, the misguided expectation of what should have been happening, but it ends up being something else. His miracle was in trusting God. Amen. And taking God His Word, being obedient to God's Word. Five, six, still nothing changed. Seven dips and boo! It's like children's child's skin healed completely, amen, by the power of God. Someone say, no misguided expectation. No, no. I've learned it's not whatever God asks me to do, is not dependent on somebody else moving balls to make it happen for me. Can we got time for a quick story before we do the last point? I should probably generalize a little bit, but there was these blokes. Let's just say it that way. And they're out one night doing a bit of macropod harvesting. This will get some of you thinking. So they're out harvesting macropods. All right. And there's this big daddy macropod. And you think, man, this bloke's big. He's tall. He stands up in the grass so tall. He's looking at me like, it's a roo. I'm calling it macropod because it's the Australian emblem. We've got to be careful. <laughs> but you know, they do harvest macropods for skins and meat to clothe the nation and feed the people. Is that all right today? Yeah? So there's this big macropod standing up tall and stout. And they had this macropod in the sights of the scope. Pitch black, dark, night. And Big Daddy Macropod just goes, ooh, has a nibble on a bit of grass. Over the top of his head it went. He stands back up and you're going, these blokes that were out that night go, what was that? Okay, line him up again. Just about ready to pull the trigger, and old big macropod Roo goes, mm. <laughs> just moves two paces and nibbles a bit more grass. He stands back up again. Oh. Wow. 
Wow, no wonder he's a big daddy macropod. Because he's always staying low. The longevity and the greatness of which he'd become was because he stayed low. Mm, eat a bit of grass. Oh, I go to the top and he stands back up again. Oh. Uh-huh. Misguided expectation wants to keep you proud and tall. When you say, no, I'm not going to have misguided expectation. I'm going to go low and be humble. And then I'll be great. And he stands in all his glory. Because <laughs> you can go back to that same area, location. And there's Big Daddy Macropod next night. <laughs> and you go, oh, here we go. We're on again tonight. Line him up. He's eating more grass. That's why he's big. And that's why he's great. Because he kept saying low. He stayed bowed down. Are you catching something? I think I've got the point home. See, misguided expectation will keep you proud and tall. Thinking God will do it this way. He'll get this person to orchestrate and move things around so I can be noticed and I'll be in the place where I need to be. No. Someone say no. It's not negative expectation. It's not found in neutral expectation. Nor is it found in misguided expectation. But you know what the life is, number four? It's in positive expectation. Because hope is a positive expectation of a good outcome that God will perform his word someone say positive expectation I knew you knew it all the time <laughs> I just had to take you on the journey so you can identify no you see it's not negative expectation but that's real there's things in life that produce that neutral you'll find them every day in Bow Desert expecting nothing just life happens. Misguided is somebody else will make it happen for me. But no, they won't. Hmm. Someone say positive. It's declaring a positive expectation. There was a certain woman in Mark chapter 5 who had a flow of blood for 12 years and suffered many things from many physicians. And she had spent all she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. And when she'd heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. She had hope. She had a positive expectation, which placed a demand on the anointing of God. And I want to commit to Harvest Point Church today that we are a people with a positive expectation that if we have the same that she'd heard, I pray today you hearing, it's by the hearing of the Word of God which produces faith in your life upon which faith is founded upon a hope, amen. It's a confident expectation. Therefore, she was saying, if I can just touch the hem of His garment, it's not I might be made whole. I'll see what happens. I hope that someone else can move and notice me and point me out to Jesus so that she, he can do something for me. She just simply said, I have a positive expectation of a good outcome. And if I attach my faith to the promise of God, I shall be made whole. Mm. I shall be made whole. Can you see the difference here? This is a positive expectation of a good outcome because what God was, what she'd heard about Jesus was still true today. She said, if I can just touch him, I'll be made whole. There were people all around. The disciples said, Jesus, look at these people. There's a multitude pushing up against you. He said, no, but somebody touched me. Yeah, yeah, there's a release. So you can be with the mob and just be jostling along 
Right, you can come to church on Sunday and just jostle along. Yeah, woo hoo, hallelujah. Someone's excited, praise the Lord. I'm glad they're having a good day. Right, but my world is absolutely. You can come. But you know, there's somebody else who comes and says, I'm going to get my miracle today. I'm going to receive and open my mouth and something something is going to happen this morning. See, the word was given to the worship in the transition today. Someone said, I'm going to attach faith to that. I'm getting my miracle. I'm getting my breakthrough. I'm getting my breakthrough, amen. She said, if I could just touch the hem of his garment. You see, there was a release and a flow of God's anointing because faith was attached to the hope-filled expectation that of what she'd heard about Jesus was going to happen for her. And you know what? I've decided that if that can happen for that woman, it can happen for me. You see, you've got to put yourself in the text today and say, if it worked for her, if it happened for her, it can happen for me today. Woo! Come on, you got. Come, oh, yeah, yeah. I know what happens Monday. I know what happens Tuesday to our thoughts, our thinking. You know, old, the old accuser comes along and goes, You dreaming? What are you thinking? You know what I'm saying? Someone say, I got hope today. Come on, we're on the positive this morning. Positive hope. It's a positive expectation. This woman said, if I can touch him, I shall be made whole. Hallelujah. Well, faith is in that moment, isn't it? Faith is there. Now, faith is the substance or the reality of things expected. <laughs> Hope for things expected. I mean, faith is attached to that. And boom, it's in our reality. Hallelujah. I'm believing for breakthrough financially for some of you. Think, oh, well, the economy is this and that's happening. You know, some of you are saying about this weather, weather system. You know what? Bless God. Bring the rain on. But we've got a positive, confident expectation that God's going to protect us. He's going to take good care of us. Amen. And the ground needs a soaking and God's got it all in control. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> I'm just using a thing that we know. Like there's words out there already. People are, people are getting fearful. They've got a fearful expectation. Oh, no, it's like whatever year it was and this year and that year. We go, oh, yes, it's God's on the throne and God's going to take good care of His people today. Hallelujah. Did I finish this text? She said, if only my touch is closed, I'll be made well. I'm reading from Mark 5, 25. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed. The musos can come. And of the affliction. And Jesus, immediately knowing himself, the power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, Who touched my clothes? His disciples said to him, You see the multitude thronging you, and you say, Who touched me? He looked around, saw her who had done this thing, but the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing that what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. And be healed of your affliction. Hallelujah. Come on. I know, and this is what I'm saying. I said it at the first Sunday of the year. We have got people who are opposing this truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith. Well, if Jesus said that to that daughter, who knows he's talking to me, the son, and you, the daughter today. Your faith has made you well today. Hallelujah. Some of you need to say, the faith I have in the living God has made me well today. And your wellness can be your circumstances changing, restitution or relationship uh, reversals of, of things turning right, right up for the glory of God, physically, emotionally, financially. Your world can change today as you say, according to my faith, be it unto me today. Amen. If it worked for this little woman, she said, Jesus said, according to your faith, be it unto you today. According to your faith, Harvest Point Church, be it unto you today. According to my faith, be it unto me today. Who's believing God for grand things? You see, this is where the crunch comes. Some say, oh yeah, I've tried that. Don't you know what that was right there? It was a neutral expectation of not being disappointed. I'm encouraging you today by the Spirit of God. Have a positive, confident expectation in what God is doing 
for your life this day in Jesus' Name. Let's stand on our feet this morning. Hallelujah. The same power that was available that day was available to all those who were in the crowd. And can I humbly say to you before you this morning, the same power that was available that day, not just to that woman, but to all the crowd that was there, is available to us today. Here on this 21st day of the first month, January of 2024, because it's the same vehicle of faith that we access the promises of God. Amen. As we have our hope built on precious promises today, which is sure. Yes, amen. And you know, I'm very aware of in my heart today, it's like I can hear voices in my mind of people saying, yes, but. Hmm. Today, we're shifting your but. I'm not being rude. <laughs> Do you get that today? Let's leave the but off it in that sense, say, I trust God today, amen. The same power, because Jesus said in Hebrews, listen to me, this is not, I didn't, I, I live this stuff every day. Pastor Grace and I are believing for things of we are taking this promise tomorrow and we're working it again and we'll work it again next week and we'll work it next month and we'll work it like because there's things that keep coming up that we've got to be, got to be oh, blah, 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 blah. we've got to be continually hmm, working the promise of God for our lives. Amen. Jesus said in Hebrews that He is the same yesterday today and forever. That's a promise we can attach hope to right there. That if He did it for the woman with the issue of blood and it was available for those who were in the crowd that day, it is available for me today. And I'm going to inherit and I'm going to obtain the precious promise. Yes, it may take and it probably has already taken some patience. You know what I'm saying? It's taken some Longevity, But today, I stand with you. Would you stand with me? We'll all stand together today and say, yes, God, we will be a people who will see the power of heaven turn up in our lives in Jesus' Name. I want to pray for a person this morning right now, every head bowed, every eye closed, that you've had emotional trauma has happened to you and it's affecting the health of your body. And I felt it in the Spirit right now that there's been a traumatic thing that's happened to you and it's been continually affecting your health physically in your body. The power of God here today. You say, I've had prayer before. I've had prayer before. I've been on altar call after altar call and I'm tired of doing that. Can I encourage you that we want to have a positive expectation of the power of God today. Of It's as according to your faith. They say, yeah, that's me. I'm agreeing now I'm going to receive my miracle today I just want you to take it take it for yourself this morning right now just reach your hands if that's you I'm not even going to ask you to come for it. I just want you to maybe just lift your hands to heaven right away and say yes that's me Lord I receive it today by faith in Jesus name in Jesus name There's another person today and there's been hereditary things that have happened in your bloodline. And the thoughts have been coming to you. Looks like it'll be the same for me. Can I help you today? The Holy Spirit just dropped this in my heart. Can I help you today by the power of the Holy Ghost? Take captive that thought right now and say no in Jesus' name. I, uh, yeah, actually, I just felt one person. But you know, I believe there's more than one person because often people go to the doctor and you are hit with this question every time you go there. What happened there within your family? And they make a report according to what's happened in your family. And today I want you to say no. Come on, church. Come on. Listen, this is not... I am trying to help people today to cross over into a place of kingdom living 
We are walking the journey with every one of you. We are all at a different stage. We are all working through different things. But this truth, the principle works for the smallest thing to the greatest thing. And today I defy the devil's plan to your life. I rebuke that lie. I rebuke that thought, that seed has been sown, that as it was there, so it shall be for you. I want you to say no in Jesus' Name. I receive life today. I receive wholeness today. Come on, maybe you want to do it for your family. Come on, someone exercise your voice right now. I believe, I think this has just gone viral here today. In a sense, it's, come on, let's believe God. Let's stand today forever and say, no, the prediction of what was in our breeding or in our heritage does not flow to me, nor to my children, nor to my children's children in Jesus' Name. I refute it now by the authority of heaven. I plead the blood of the cross over every individual today who's ever been plagued with this thought, this ideal, which has caused a negative expectation. Maybe it's caused a neutral. Maybe it's been misguided because you said, if I can get help over there from that person, I'll be right. Today, Jesus Christ says, the resurrection power has produced hope on the inside of you which produces joy and strength has been released today. I break every chemical imbalance today off their lives in Jesus' Name. And we speak, let every cell function in accordance with God's plan and God's purpose. What are, we, what are we doing? I'm talking about a positive expectation of God's truth today, working in your physical body. For those others before, it was working in your physical body because it was stemmed from your emotion. And we break the cycle of repetition, bad, negative thing, and we break its power off today in Jesus' Name. Come on, I hope you're receiving this morning. I hope you're receiving today. This is in the atmosphere. It's faith that's being released right now for you. Come on, some of you were agreeing with a report. Some of you have agreed with what the doctor has said. And I want you to encourage you to say no in Jesus' Name. Say no. Yeah, you know, come on, I'm not telling you not to go. Listen, Pastor Mark is not telling anybody not to go to the doctor, but you get to choose what you believe. That's what I am saying. You get to choose whose report this I, the prophet said, whose report shall you believe? Shall you believe? And he went on to say, We shall believe the report of the Lord today. That, That relationship that's broken, you can say, Oh, it'll never be fixed. Whose report shall you believe? We shall believe the report of the Lord today that with the power of the grace of God and mercy shown, we can turn everything right side up in Jesus' Name and see the power of God work today. I'm talking to those that are baby Christians. I'm talking to those that are mature. Come on, there's no separation, no no boxing and dicing. People today, we are all in this mix to receive of God this morning. Amen. We're received by faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And then you water that promise. You water that seed. 